Hello, welcome everyone. We're just going to give it two minutes to get everyone started and settled. Well, hello, and thank you for joining us at today's webinar, Migrating to Extreme Cloud IQ. My name is Elena Tufford, and I'm the Marketing Manager for OCR Canada. Many of our current customers are using Wing and Hive Manager, and in this webinar, our top engineers are going to walk you through migrating to next-gen cloud management with Extreme Cloud IQ. Today's presenters are Richard Hunt, Senior Product Manager of Cloud and Wireless at Extreme Networks, Chris Feitug, Senior Wireless Network Engineer at OCR Canada, and Jeremiah Shea, Canadian Channel Manager at Extreme Networks. If you have any questions, we invite you to use the Q&A feature at this meeting and we'll work to address them following the presentation. Rich, when you're ready, please take it away. Thanks, Elena. Uh, good morning, everyone. I believe I might be a name from the past for you. Uh, a bit of my background before we get started is, um, so I came from the zebra wing world and during the transition to, uh, to extreme, I actually came on board with OCR. Um, so I believe that we have actually talked in the past. Um, and then about just over two years ago, I was invited from the product management group at Extreme to come on board and help run the wing division. And then I migrated on to our applications. So for the last couple of years, I've uh, been in the, uh, the technical product management position where I help bring field advice into our products. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited to, to come back and, and talk to all of you about um, where we are today. So uh, as we see here on the key points, what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of go back into history and talk about where we were when we had these decisions um, and then where we are today and um, how that predicts the future for us. And then I'm, I'm going to show you what it all looks like and do the walkthrough. Um, not many slides. I will flip through them quickly, um, but I'm going to leave these with uh, OCR. So if you have questions or you want to follow up on feature sets and things like that, when I flash those slides, uh, please reach out to uh, Alana or um, those at OCR, and they will be able to uh, help you with those. So uh, when we go back, uh, for, for some of you, I, I know we, we've got a, a split crowd today. Um, I'm just going to start with the on-prem, and then I'm going to I'm going to migrate on to our cloud. Um, so uh, from the on-prem perspective and a wing perspective, five years ago, the, the majority of the sales were um, on-prem solutions, perpetual licensing, maintenance. Um, and the focus was really just on how to manage your network and make sure that your network is operating flawlessly. So we would look at applications. Uh, we would do some troubleshooting history, that sort of thing. Uh, and the idea was to get more of that that central management. So uh, typically a, a wing VX, for example, uh, some, some might have an RFS controller uh, if you're an on-prem. Now, uh, kind of what started to happen was once we started building these, these management use cases, uh, we, we started to see uh, business use cases show up. Uh, folks started to ask, well, can I get analytics uh, in my shop, for example? Um, how many people are visiting and stuff. I want to know these answers, these, these retail analytics, which is uh, where it all started. Uh, and then there was, can I get more complicated guest management, for example? I don't want to have to create a, a wireless LAN and, uh, or an SSID for each different splash page I want to put up. 
um, way, way back at the beginning, and we'll, we'll get into this, there was the security aspect, so air defense, which has actually been around since the early 2000s. Um, and then what we didn't have, which we were growing into, was uh, our Ensite platform. And so um, for those of you who don't know what Ensite is, it's, Ensite was a, an add-on application that was designed to bring all of the different uh, connected users into a single pane. So uh, if you were to go through the on-prem stuff and, and try to troubleshoot, you would have to go to each site and see who's connected. So although we had central management, inside the program, it was still separated based on sites. So Ensite brings all of those together into a central management. Um, some of the issues that we had or that we were faced with uh, were um, loading these different business use cases onto different machines. Where are they stored? There's additional licensing, there's maintenance, um, all of these different complicated aspects in order to make sure that we can provide these, these products out to you. Um, and so what that does is it really, it, it complicates the scenario. In some cases we, we had uh, businesses where there were different departments that had to interwork with each other. And sometimes that could take a while or there's budgeting, that sort of thing that needs to be uh, apply to, to a specific sale and, and the deployment of, of these use cases. So what we've done is we've actually simplified this and we're starting to bring these uh, applications all into, uh, all into our cloud. Now, um, we're still going to continue to support and build on our on-prem services. What we can't do is leverage the um, the benefits of cloud. So when we talk about um, what we could do with our, our cloud applications is we could, we're hosting it. So we don't need to request resources, hardware, VMs, licensing, and that sort of thing. We could actually put it just up into our cloud and integrate it into our cloud platforms, which makes it very, very simple. Um, so by doing this, we, we've created uh, sort of two, two separate paths. We've got our on-prem path, and then we have our cloud path. The, uh, the, the added benefit to this is, uh, it, for example, if we were to look at uh, just getting insights of what's going on, so I talked about that insight program before, um, and you don't want to lose that data and it's very important to you, well, it's not just one machine anymore. Now it's three machines to, that we need to spin up to, to, to get operational. From a cloud perspective, we've, I mean, we're at nine nines, um, and I believe this last year we actually reported no outages at all, so we actually hit that 100%. Um, with, with no downtime, and we carry all of the redundancy and everything else into these applications. Uh, so this is where the value of cloud is really growing. Um, so I'm going to kind of take two different talk tracks and go in parallel because I know we have sort of a, a, a split audience here. Um, the, the key goal here is to talk about how our applications are uh, working in the cloud, how to make things a little bit easier for you. If you're existing wing or extreme campus controller customers, how does um, how can you get value out of today's products? And then if you're an existing um, cloud subscriber, uh, what what's going on with with added value for um, for your subscriptions as well? So when we look at the wing and the extreme campus controller, what we've done is we've actually created the ability for you to get cloud visibility. So basically, you take your network and you point it into the cloud. And you could do this for free. So majority of the features that you're going to see or that you would have seen in that Ensite platform that I talked about, you could get for free in the cloud. And this prevents you from having to put in three VMs, configure them, license them, and keep up on maintenance and support for those. The other advantages are we could continue to add to the visibility without touching your network. Um, the wing visibility in the Connect is uh, what we call northbound only. So you're only sending data. There's no uh, information coming from the cloud back down into your system. And we also have um, uh, regional specific um, cloud storage. So uh, we, we call them RDCs. So if you're Canadian and you're sending your information to an RDC, you could choose to send that information and keep it within Canada um, and we also have all of the security and, and that sort of thing behind it. Um, but that's, that's kind of the, the benefits and, and added value that you would get, and that's free. Now, if you want to add to that, we have what we call um, a navigator license, which does have a fee to it, and it's, it's no way near what our, our pilot subscription fee is. And this is for 
our switching and weighing um, users. And this not only provides you the, the connect level visibility, uh, which I'm gonna show you in the, in the demo as well, um, but it also provides you with the ability to access your controllers through the cloud service. So now we, we get that southbound uh, traffic. So the benefit to this is if you have a, uh, a true support contract with, with OCR, um, then you don't have to go through all of your firewalls, VPNs and tracking and everything else. You could actually provide um, access to all your switching and your wireless infrastructure just through an account um, in our cloud IQ. And then they would be able to from anywhere access the system. Uh, that comes in very, very handy. And it's easy to track because you can um, add change users and do what you want there. Uh, coming up in our Navigator license for Wing, we'll actually be adding in some troubleshooting and application visibility as well. Um, so application visibility actually is working now. We're just going to get a bit more granular with it, but then you'll be able to see all the different types of applications that are being used on your system. And then you do have the option to do hybrid installations. So if you had, uh, for example, tunneled applications and large uh, roaming domains, um, if you were typically um, schools, colleges, hospitals, um, very large roaming domains. Um, so we have our, our extreme campus controller that could provide um, support for that. And uh, Wing in some cases can support that as well. Um, so what you could do is keep your tunneling on site, connect that into the cloud, and then um, offices, remote offices or remote home installations, that sort of thing, go direct to the cloud. Um, and then you can leverage additional benefits uh, from those, those cloud subscribers. And I'm, I'll show you where, uh, what that looks like in a, in a visual representation in a second. Uh, from a cloud IQ perspective, if you're, if you're already on, you could actually get just a a cloud AP and as well, you can go on to connect, which is free and you'll get some basic configuration and visibility um, to your access points. So you could put on a couple of SSIDs, for example, a guest in an office without having to license that. Uh, then you have the option to go into our pilot license, which is above uh, what we have for Navigator. Um, and the reason behind this is that the, the technology in Wing only provides us with so much that we could do and we don't wanna charge the full pilot price for that. And so um, that's where Wing's uh, visibility comes in under the navigator. And then the, the true cloud comes in under pilot. So you'll get more insights out of a cloud AP and pilot. Um, and you'll get access to the essentials package. The essentials package I'm going to talk to in, in some pretty good detail for you so that you get a, a good understanding of, of what we've provided. But this is the direction of extreme. This is where we're adding more value to your network at no additional cost. So the essentials package, um, and we'll get there, but it includes uh, four to five different items right now uh, at no additional cost for you to run your network where uh, from an on-prem perspective, uh, we can't interact with the wing devices. So there's, a, there's an on-prem and those are the, the continued um, products like guest, um, um, guest and air defense, for example. Uh, coming up, we're gonna involve, or we're gonna have our ML and AI, um, which will integrate with, with our cloud. And in some cases, our extreme campus controller will be able to benefit off of our ML AI as well. Um, but the feature sets for that is still to be determined. And of course you have the unlimited data access or options and you it's easy to manage, maintain, it's all done in the cloud for you. So uh, from a, a physical representation, what does this look like? Well, um, from a wing perspective, you're gonna have all of your on-prem devices uh, and you're just going to uh, point them into the cloud and then you're gonna get uh, location visibility and you're, you're gonna get your SSH proxy services if you choose that. And then from a cloud perspective, you just basically go directly into the cloud and then you can leverage um, our uh, essentials, AI, ML um, standpoint. Uh, this slide is, is an important slide as well because you'll see here that I have common hardware and universal hardware um, listed here. So this is a, another direction that, that we've taken and that we have released. Um, that is that you could purchase switches and decide which operating system from extreme you wanna have. You can have VOS or XOS or anything like that on your switches and you can manage those um, in the cloud. 
And we also are doing the same with, with uh, access points. So I would say by uh, April of 2021, you'll be able to buy a, what we call a universal SKU access point. I believe the first one coming out is our 410C. And you'll be able to decide what you want for your management platform with that access point. Um, so if I'm uh, a Wing user currently and I want to stay with Wing, well, I'm going to buy universal hardware and I'm still adopted to Wing controllers and I'm still operating as normal. Um, same with Extreme Campus Controller. But you also have the ability to flip that into a cloud mode where you can go direct and start to leverage the pilot licensing, the essentials, and the ML AI should you choose. And then you won't need the features of the, the controllers um, unless you're tunneling, and then we're going to come up with some additional solutions for tunneling. This is um, basically what it's going to look like. So right now you have your option, um, either wing or either cloud, but that common hardware is going to give you the ability to, to, to jump between those two. So I'm going to go into essentials and then I'm going to run through a, a bit of a demo just to show you what it all looks like. Um, so essentials is uh, above and beyond what the standard uh, market is producing right now. So the standard market is saying, well, we, yes, we could do splash pages and yes, we can do uh, retail analytics, uh, but their focus is more on MLAI and what is the network doing and how good is the network? But we're doing that already. We're already focused on how the network is. So we could take some of those resources and we could really look at what the added value for that is. And that added value is going to be your business use case. Um, we're more and more as networks are out there, we're expanding beyond speeds and feeds and all of the technical stuff. And now we wanna see, well, how, what, what else can we do with our networks? Like how, give me, give me something more for the network. I've been looking at getting speeds. I've been watching my devices and making sure that everything's okay. But when I actually wanna do stuff with this, um, I've got to leverage um, different types of external configuration parameters, APIs, or my own coding, or I've got to go to somebody else, or how do I get access into that? So what we've done is with Extreme Essentials, um, we have actually brought some of our on-prem applications into the cloud, and we've given them all of the, the processing and the, um, the development behind it. So it's an out-of-the-box solution. You don't have to, do we do location essentials or do we do locations? Yes, we do. Um, how do I see that? Well, great question, because you're gonna have all sorts of different dashboards, customized dashboards, all sorts of different information that you could use today. And you don't have to be IT savvy into, in order to make that, uh, that dashboard come together. Whereas on, um, in the market currently before we released these, everybody was kind of sitting on, well, if you really wanna get into it, you're gonna need a developer and get some APIs and, and get real complicated and figure out how this is gonna work. So you, you get told that it's, it's there and it's supported, but when you actually wanna do a proof of concept or test it or anything else, there's this long line of reasons and roadblocks to get there. Um, and that is no longer the case today. So the essentials that, we are, uh, that have been released are air defense, essentials, location essentials, guest essentials, and IoT essentials. Uh, extreme compliance essentials will be coming out in the new year. So for those of you uh, who are familiar with our on-prem, Extreme Air Defense is uh, um, an older security platform. It's a very mature security platform, and we're doing a lot of development on that to keep it up to date. But it's been around since, I think, 2002. Um, and we've been storing all of the different threats in our database. So we have the largest threat database for security. Typically, most vendors are putting out free whips. So I'm going to do what we call rogue detection, and I can stay PCI compliant. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually take, or what we have done is we're taking parts of our air defense and our threat database, for example, and we're including that threat database in there. So now not only are you just being PCI compliant and checking rogues, but we're also going to check for some of our, our top threats. So we're gonna be looking at, right now we're at 42 threats that we've added into uh, Air Defense Essentials. And I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, we had a location platform that we've brought into cloud. Unfortunately, um, it is only available to cloud. So it, we did have one that was on the, the wing platform, um, but that's gone end of sale. 
Um, and we will have uh, Location Essentials Plus product coming out next year. And how that looks and, and how, what that integrates with is still be, to de be determined right now of whether or not it will support um, the, the Wing platform. But um, the idea behind the Essentials Plus is if you're looking for uh, faster RTLS times, like wayfinding, that sort of thing, then it's, a, it's an on-prem uh, device or VM, for example, that's going to be handling some of the uh, overload and then sends that up into the cloud, and, and then you'll be able to see it. Extreme Guest Essentials. So we have an on-prem called Extreme Guest, and we've migrated that into the, the cloud as well. And this is a very advanced way to manage guest networks. We also have our IoT essentials, which is there to protect devices. So your IoT devices, because they are the, the um, first and foremost target of attack um, for uh, hackers. And then compliance is if you want it to be HIPAA compliant or you want to be PCI compliant and generate those reports across your network. So Location Essentials is uh, our location tracking platform. And we're using it for uh, doing zone tracking and presence. Um, we're doing proximity and we're also doing asset tracking, BLE, engagement, um, development integration. And then soon we'll have a, a whole slew of APIs for you to add into that as well. This is where you can get your dwell time statistics. Um, how many people are in and out of the building and we're reading beacons. So you don't have to be connected. We just want to know how many people are in and out of the, be uh, in and out of the building. There are some gotchas behind um, the random beaconization and everything else. Um, and we could get into those details. Um, if you're interested in the location essentials, just reach out to OCR. And, uh, and between the two of us or the three of us, we'll all be able to, to go into the weeds with that and, and help you with it. Um, but again, Location Essentials, this is included in a, a pilot subscription. So the use cases for that, asset tracking, you could use uh, user tracking. We have some crowd monitoring, which I'll show you. You get um, your site information, and obviously you get your BLE engagement as well. These are some of the features. I'm just flashing this screen. Again, please reach out to OCR if you want to drill down deeper into this. And I'll just pause on that for a couple of seconds and move forward. We have an app in the iOS store that you can test. So what this does is it's called Proximity Assistant and you, you run the Proximity Assistant and then you can configure the BLE radio on any access point you want or you can use a, a BLE tag if you've got it and it will actually trigger um, events. So it'll say, welcome to store A, welcome to store B, welcome to um, wherever. And so you'll be able to test the BLE Proximity Assistant and see how accurate it can actually be. Um, going into guest essentials. So um, we're, we're, the power of guest essentials, and, and this is probably our, our biggest essential that we released, and it, and it was released this week, uh, is the ability to manage and maintain some pretty advanced onboarding, um, what we call onboarding policies into a guest network. Um, but we do it based on your location, and we've got a pretty good rule engine, um, which will allow you to distinguish between uh, different types of users, for example, if you wanted to. Uh, we've included all of the integrated social media, the text messaging, and um, email. So if you wanted somebody to register, capture their email, you could do that. If you wanted to text them a code to get on, you can do that. Um, some of the, the typical use cases, if we look at that, um, you've got the self-registration form for the guest, but you also have sponsored access, which is very, very popular. So uh, if I come into a downtown or if you have an um, office in a very metropolitan type area and you don't want the apartment building jumping on your guest network, well, how do I prevent them from getting on there? Um, go ahead and use sponsored access. And what that does is uh, myself or, or Alana or Chris come to visit you at the office and we sit down at the boardroom, we connect to your guest network and we put your email address in and then you get an email and say approved. And now I'm on the network for whatever customized it, four hours, for example. Um, very, very popular. We have the social media login as well if you wanna track some of those, um, some of those key metrics. Um, and so one of the key items here is, is all of these different use cases, the different role assignments, and you could do rate limits and stuff. You could have one guest network configured across your entire company 
but then you can select each use case per building. So you don't have to have all of these multiple guest networks with all of these different advanced uh, customizations in each one. The other thing that's really good about um, the guest network and the and guest essentials is that you could generate your guest templates and do them um, through a builder right in the web page. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So you don't have to be a coder in order to uh, get a splash page working. Um, again, another one of those fancy feature flash slides, it just shows you um, all of the capabilities that um, Guest Essentials brings to the table, and it's all included in a pilot license, nothing extra. Um, going into IoT Essentials, so when we look at this, the, the typical use case for IoT Essentials we've seen has been in healthcare, but uh, we've seen areas where, for example, um, uh, hotels in, in Vegas had a um, fish, they had an IOT uh, fish pump or something in the fish tank and it got hacked and they were able to pull in all of the high rollers, like a whole list of high rollers um, and, and sell that on the, the black market. So what you could do with IOT essentials is you could take this 150W wall plate and soon the 302 um, wall plate and you can use the ethernet ports to protect devices. But what's neat about it is it provides an operator access so that um, if you're, if you're a, a, in an IT role, you could set up uh, specific rules that says uh, this infusion pump can only talk to a specific device and nothing else. And you can call that rule infusion pump. Now, when you have an installer come in, they could put that in line with the infusion pump, go into the cloud, log in see that infusion pump and then apply. It would be a deny all. So it's, you can't get through until you assign it and call it an infusion pump. Now, all of those rules take into effect. The device is able to communicate and, and IT administration did not have to get involved. You didn't have to wait and figure out when are they gonna get on site? Please call me, I'm waiting around, what's going on? You don't have to worry about any of those scenarios. Um, so the use case screen again here is, uh, so it's network protection. And you get some um, analytics. Uh, you'll, you'll get information on what types of applications are being run through it. One of the neat use cases to this, especially if you're going to use the uh, 302W, is that you could use this as an overlay. So you don't have to have an extreme network. You don't have to have wing or cloud. Um, it could be something totally different. And you could put this over top. And if you use the 302W, then you could use essentials over top of that network. You could use the 302W to supply IoT protection air defense protection, um, guest access as well, uh, and location data. So um, there are a lot of different use cases and it can get very complicated, but that's why you have a, a great partner like OCR to help you. These are the comparisons. So the IoT essentials actually came from our on-prem, which is Defender for IoT. And if you're familiar with it or not familiar with it, this is where you'll be able to see uh, the differences between the on-prem versions and the uh, essentials or the cloud version. Um, and then last but not least, we have our air defense essentials. This is our security platform. I talked about this a bit earlier. So we have our 42 wireless security threats. We're gonna protect your network and it's included in the pilot subscription. Use cases here to monitor the airspace, see what your threat analysis is at each location. And if you even need to invest in more security platforms. Um, and investing in that platform would be our air defense, um, uh, air, air defense enterprise. So um, this is what we could do with our air defense essentials. You can do some rogue detection, client detection, and termination. Um, and then you have your threat detection. And I'll show you how you can uh, manage the alarm lifecycle as well um, if you want to meet with your, your security platform. The history behind air defense um, is, oh yeah, over 15 years. I mean, 2002 is a long time to be developing a, a, a product and a platform. Um, and the tools on it are absolutely amazing. And we are actually pulling in um, 300 RF attributes per minute per device. Um, so if you were to go into the air defense enterprise platform, you could actually go back in time and look at each one of those attributes per device per minute. And um, that's something if, you, if you're interested in seeing, 
um, is going to take up a lot of time. So we won't cover that extensively here. We do have um, an air defense summary video out on, um, out on our site on YouTube, as well as a walkthrough on the essentials as well. Um, and um, OCR can also give you demos and, uh, and walk through this with you as well. Um, but what do you get out of that, out of enterprise that you would not get out of the essentials package? You would get um, some tools like AP test or wireless, wireless vulnerability. Um, so those two are almost hand in hand. Um, what you could do with AP tests is if somebody's at a store and you're located out of Montreal and the store's in British Columbia and they say, I can't get access onto the guest network or I can't get access to this network, you can actually use an AP at the remote location to go through and test, maybe do a download and, and do a speed test or connectivity test, make sure everything is okay. And it will come back and report to you and tell you what's going on. Same with wireless vulnerability. What if I wanna test my actual security? So you can actually turn an AP into a bit of a hack tool and see if it will get through all your rules, everything. Spectrum analysis, I think everybody is aware of that now. Um, that's where you can see what the energy is like in your area. Um, Live view gives you the ability to see what that device is doing, super cool tool. Uh, very, I'm a big gadget guy, so if I flip my phone on and fire up this tool, you can actually see all the different IoT devices in my home, from Philips Hue to the Dyson to my garage door opener and uh, what that traffic looks like, um, as well as we could do it for BLE. So we're doing BLE protection. We're the only ones doing BLE protection. And where that comes in is if everybody's starting to leverage BLE to trigger engagement with customers, Last thing you want is for somebody to um, put up a fake BLE device that sends them, sends your customer to a site that looks like your loyalty site, have them put in the credentials, and now they can take over their account and, um, and it cause some issues for you. So we have the ability to protect against all of that as well with our extreme air defense. Um, so that said, uh, slides are over. I'm going to, or for now, <laughs> I'm going to switch over and I'm going to um, show you what the uh, what the demo lab looks like. So I'm going to go back to that on-prem real quick just to show you what we're looking at. Um, this is actually a live customer. It's a mall. And they have 7532 spread throughout the mall with an RFS 4000 as their gateway. And that goes back to a Wing VX. So this is very similar to what most of you are probably sitting at right now. Um, and then we're leveraging our location, guest, and air defense. And no longer are we pointing to Ensight, but we are actually pointing into the cloud. So let's bring that up. So if you were to leverage the free visibility uh, for Connect, this is what you would see from a wing perspective. So you're going to see VXs, the RFS. We've got our access points, our 7532s. But you're also going to see that you can look at XOS switches. And we've got some cloud devices in here as well. So you can have that hybrid installation and the mix match going on. Um, and you could use it to migrate, you could use it uh, in hybrid scenarios. Uh, but the good news is that all of that information comes back to one spot so that you can manage it any way you want. Um, so a quick look of what an access point will look like. Um, this is a, uh, this would be a, a navigator level, but this is the stuff that you'll see from a connect. So what you notice here is that this is grayed out um, we are updating our UI, so it think this will go away, um, but we want it to be out, out in GA first. So um, what you're seeing here is information being sent up from Wing. You can look at, at client counts, memory usage, the CPU information. You can see where it is on a map. Um, you can look at some of the system information as well and wireless interfaces, what they're doing. So your radios, as well as we do a score based on what your clients are reporting back. And you can list all of the clients that are, have been on that system and you could filter between connected, not connected if you want to, um, it, but that'll give you that, that history. And soon to come out in our uh, Navigator license, we'll have um, alarms and logs, that sort of thing, um, and your application, which is, is soon to come out. Uh, you can uh, view things on a, a map as well. So if we look at our 360 plan, so from a, here we go, from a wing perspective, um, you'll be able to take a look at what these devices, where they are on their map, and you draw these out. And um, 
coming up, I believe we're going to be bringing in the, the heat map, but right now it's, it's, it's mapping. And from a, um, a cloud perspective, um, we'll be able to get a little bit more features out of that once we process it. Um, so you're going to see this is, uh, I, I glow in the dark. Um, I'm on Fort Erie, so I'm pretty sure Buffalo can see me. And if you were to put the glasses on, I would probably look like this. Um, so we'll go back and we'll take a, a little bit um, of a deep dive here. Um, some of the wireless client information. So these are uh, guest users sitting at that mall. And I can look at this client device, uh, see when they were connected and get a bit of a history of this. So we could tell whether they got authorization. So that was good. And they got DHCP. So if you had a wing client device that connected to a network, but it didn't get any IP information or anything, then it would just show a red dot here. Um, if they were roaming, if this device was roaming, you'd be able to see it across all of the different ones. But unfortunately, I grabbed a different one that is not roaming. Um, none of these would be roaming. So what we could do is actually um, go into this location, which I know is going to have some roamings. And we could take a look at, and now this is a wing network, just so you know. And we could take a look at some of the roaming information. So we know um, the time spent on these access points and what's going on with that session information. And uh, we could dive down up here, sorry. We could take a look at what the connectivity and usage information is and where that access point sits in the, uh, in the map as well as some of the, the, the channel history information. And then it's actually drawn out here. Um, so this is, this is uh, from a, a wing perspective. Uh, if we want to look at, uh, if I can get the right timeline. Go to historical. So we've got a couple of devices and you can see here, I've tested actually from a guest network. So I've got my username sitting on here from guest essentials. So when I click on this, I get, this starts to populate. So I start to get a bit more information from management if, um, in order to see this. And I can see all the different realms. So, um, well, this is actually, you'll see this on wing. It's this information here and you get some additional app information here as well um, from a, a true cloud AP because we're, we're talking directly into the cloud now. We're not trying to decipher what's going on in Insight. We will continue to develop on the wing stats just as an FYI for everyone. So um, wing stats in here will, will continue to get better. So if I am a pilot subscriber and I'm on the cloud, what else can I do with this? Um, and this is where we look at our essentials. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is our guest essentials. And so we're gonna log in and we're gonna get, and, and this is pretty common for our essentials platform where you're gonna see a landing dashboard. And then at the top, when you scroll up, will be a more insights tab, which will drive into that application. But what this is gonna tell us is we have access to um, users and online clients, email um, and what's going on. Now, now this is my lab. I'm gonna switch over to our uh, development lab so you can see a bit more data of what's possible. Um, Actually, we're going to see the same thing. So normally you would see the, um, the, the social media login and, and that sort of information here if you were using that. And you can see how many devices are actually logged into that. Uh, when we drill down into the more insights, this is where we get access directly into the application itself. So if you are um, an on-prem wing user, we do have on-prem guest, which does the same thing as this. So you've got your custom dashboards. You can add, create new, and then what we do is we just drag and drop different themes. And then you can open this and you can choose different types of widgets and stuff that, like that that you wanna see. Um, from an on-prem perspective, you can export that as a report. That's coming in the future for our essentials. The types of configuration that you're gonna be able to see is kind of like a radius um, authentication. I won't go too deep into the weeds on this. Um, but, but it's, you've got different types of uh, roles that you can create. So what you could basically do is create a login splash page on your network, and then you can log in and be an employee, or you can log in and be a gold, silver, bronze, that type of thing off of the same um, network. So you can create all these different roles, different VLANs and firewall rules to all of these different people and, and really give a, a customized experience on that same wireless LAN. Um, the notification, so 
uh, email and SMTP. You don't need to configure an SMTP server or a Clickatel account for SMS. It's automatically built into um, Essentials. It is not on the on-prem. So you would have to do a little bit extra on the on-prem side. Um, but this is where the benefits of the, the cloud come in because we can create our own accounts and provide that for you. Uh, that's not something we can do with the on-prem. So you'll be able to just say, hey, I want to text a code to somebody and it works um, very, very smoothly. And it's included in that, that product. Uh, the key here, and, and this is what I wanted to show as well. So you can actually create these fancy rules where you can say, you, I want you to register with an email. And I'm going to send you, um, I'm going to send you a code. And, and why would you do that? Because you want to validate that email account, download that, and then start an email campaign and start emailing that user. A uh, great way to get people to, to log into the system. But you can get even more complicated. You can start to add more rules. So you could say, but I don't want that device, that user, to log in with more than one device or five devices. And maybe I only want to apply that to uh, our corporate head office or our DCs. But I will, I, I'll open it up to anybody that's going into our stores. And you can actually create these different policies. And based on the rule, you can actually take that. So I just want, I have a corporate policy and I have a store policy. So I take that. And I only have, for example, the one guest network, but I can go down into the tree and I can assign that different right down to the floor. So um, I've got a store on floor one and I've got corporate on floor two. Then you can separate those to the location right down to the floor. And this is the power and flexibility that that guest has to offer. On top of that power and flexibility, we also have our, our user templates. You can select uh, you can clone and you can create and change and add themes and um, develop on the fly, make it look nice, uh, change the colors, add the pictures, and then you can deploy that in a similar fashion to uh, the tree. So you can go in here, choose your network, and then you can select right down to the floor that you want to put it on. And then if you want to manage those, you can click here and see where some of those are applied based on that network. And this is where you're gonna get your emails and you can download. So that's Extreme Guest. Um, in the, 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 to save some time, I'm gonna go through to, to location. Um, again, please reach out to OCR for more in-depth demos and discussions for these um, if you see anything that you, that, that you like. Um, location analytics. So this is your uh, real-time information. So devices that beacon in the air. This is uh, Wi-Fi and BLE. Um, I believe this setup is, is focused on Wi-Fi. Uh, again, we're going to click on that more insights and show you some of the power here. Now you could do third-party development with this if you choose to do so. Um, and this is where you can get into the... Um, the wayfinding, for example, or asset tracking, that sort of thing. Um, so uh, I'm just looking for the top site here. Should I be? And this will take us to, there we go. So we'll be able to take a look and see what's going on. So what we have going on here is, uh, this is our floor plan. It's automatically imported from your IQ account. And it's doing some triangulation right now. Now, with new protocols like MC coming out and ultra wideband, we're going to get more, more specific and granular. Um, but right now, we're, we're at the mercy, like everybody else, of physics and, um, and the, the propeller head geeky stuff that uh, I love to do on a day to day basis. Um, but you're going to see here that we have connected users, we've got staff and visitors, that sort of thing, all configurable and manageable. You could do um, assets and BLE assets, and you can give them names and just do a search for that host name. Um, and it will show you on the map where that device is. You could generate heat maps um, and you could do this historically as well. So you can see where majority of your foot traffic is. This is a crowding alarm that we came up with. So I want, I've got one associate in the shoe section and I wanna make sure that there's an associate for every person in the shoe section. So. I'm gonna set that as a one-to-one. -one. And if two people show up and I only have one associate, I'm gonna get this alarm and it's gonna trigger somebody in, on their Zebra device or wherever to say, hey, uh, we need you over at Shoes. Um, now we're gonna take a quick look at some of the analytics. These are the dashboards that we have available. 
super totally custom customizable. Go to create, select all the different widgets that you want out of this, and then just save it. And then you'll be able to see that down here and choose which one you want to land on. And then you could download this as a PDF or as a CSV file um, so that you could send this to marketing or marketing could go right in there themselves and actually just go, hey, this is the report I want. So you don't have to do that. You don't have to customize. This is where I said, there's no API in here. There's, there's no development. This is an out of the box solution, which is telling you what's going on in your network um, with your visitors. And it's comparing different sites and, and doing all of that sort of thing. Um, and then I believe somewhere we also have our path, uh, path analysis. So this is inside the building. You can actually see where these devices are going. Uh, now, now, a cool way of seeing it, this is a bit of an older, um, uh, older version of the location, but I want to show you what it looks like from a mall perspective because we have a lot of data um, that's being driven. And, uh, and we're in the process. This is why I just switch over to our old one because we're in the process of uh, migrating them into the cloud. But you'll be able to see this is the same um, platform here. You're seeing all the different devices, different associates and visitors. But what's cool is when you start to look at the trends, um, and this is, uh, let's go back, back, how far back we can go. I love doing it like this. And we'll go into our analytics. And then we'll be able to see everybody's hot topic, which was COVID. This is a shopping mall. It's real, real time stats. And we're seeing what the effects of COVID were in this area or in this mall uh, versus what they are today. And so we're able to grab those statistics and see what, what is actually going on. We can create events and we can watch what's going on, whether that event brings in or, or doesn't bring in uh, more customers, more clients. Um, that said, this is that path analysis. So this one's a little bit different than what you see. So one is dots and this one is uh, rectangles, but you can hover over and you can see where in the mall these device, um, all of these devices are going. And what that looks like from a mall, from the mall perspective, what you're looking at is all of these different um, rectangles and where, where the um, traffic flow is. So they come in through this entrance and we're calling it the sport check court. And then they go this way or do they go this way? And that's the information that we're tracking there. Um, going back into uh, our essentials platform, um, and we also have BLE asset tracking, that sort of thing, but we'll, we can go more in depth from there if we need to. Um, so we have our security. So this is our air defense whips, and you'll be able to take a look at this and you'll be able to see, uh, for example, rogue detection, things like that. And then you'll be able to terminate from here, but we've also added DOS um, attacks and some of the other threats that we have. Um, and you can get to your expired as well, depending on what your security protocols are. Do you want them to investigate every alarm and clear them out? Um, well, how did that happen? So uh, this just went inactive and expired. Uh, what does it mean? Well, let's take a look at some of the descriptions, investigations, and mitigation of what a DOS disassociation is. Um, and that's really what, what the, that platform does. If you want to get more into it and look at the tools like LiveView and stuff from our enterprise, um, I, again, that's, that's reach out to your AE over at OCR and, and we can do a demos on that. Um, last but not least, we have our IoT protection. Uh, so again, here's our dashboard. And uh, this is where we're going to see uh, client devices, what types of applications are being used. Um, but what you can do, and this is, this is the, the neat part here, is we could take a look at some user profile. So, um, okay, this is a guess, but I'm, um, for the sake of the demo, let's just call it uh, infusion pump. Um, so you can call it infusion pump and you turn on your firewall rules and block it from everywhere you want to be and choose which VLAN you want it to have. Then you give it a group and you can call it a very simple group, infusion pump. Now, when I am a, an installer, when I log in, I don't see all of this stuff down the left side. The only thing I see is IoT. And the only thing I have access to is this client screen. And so I'm going to look and I'm going to see the MAC address of the device I just plugged in. I'm going to select it and I'm going to assign that group and I'm going to give it infusion pump. And I'm going to assign it and then I'm going to push it. I'm just going to do the config. So I will highlight it and update that device. And now I am protecting my network. Um, so that said, 
um, that is the essentials platform and that's wing visibility and everything that we have in, in cloud IQ. Um, and again, we do have support for our on-prem platforms as well. Um, it's just the challenges of, of uh, getting on uh, access to on-prem and updates and, and that sort of thing is a, a different beast than it would be if we're uh, cloud. So this is where the benefits of cloud are really gonna come in is that we could do these updates in real time um, without affecting your network. Um, so with that, I believe I'm gonna fire this back up and I'm going to get um, Jeremiah on the line. Hey, Rich, thank you. You guys can hear me? Yep. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you giving the, uh, the high level overview. Hopefully everybody sees, you know, some, some common themes here that, you know, whether you're coming from uh, the legacy Motorola Zebra wing platform or the legacy Arrowhive Hive uh, platforms, you know, there's uh, a path forward uh, and that path forward does provide a lot of choice and flexibility. But, um, you know, ultimately, you know, the other piece too is hopefully you guys saw the value that's packed into Cloud IQ. Um, and I just wanna go over some unique kind of possibilities here or unique features that we offer with the platform. Um, so one of the biggest things is just full agnostic deployment. Um, you can see here, uh, from a device perspective, uh, you know, whether you're talking about wireless AP switches or routers, uh, all of our products tie into Cloud IQ. Uh, from a deployment perspective, it can be public, private, or completely on-prem, same experience, um, same platform. And then from a, a service provider perspective, we asked everybody at the beginning, you know, what you're using. Uh, we're the only one in the industry, you know, all of these are unique qualities to us. Uh, but the only ones that offer choice there as well. So whether you're running on AWS, GCP, or Azure, you know, retail customers, as an example, may not want to line the pockets of Amazon these days. So maybe they want to do Azure or GCP. We provide that flexibility. Uh, Rich, if you hit one more. And then besides deployment, right, fully deployment agnostic, as you can tell, there's some other first and onlys that Extreme offers, right? So we're the only cloud networking manufacturer that has these capabilities listed over here on the right. Unlimited data retention, you know, big one there, you know, one of the customers that we have in the US, Macy's, uh, most people know them from the department store retail company, uh, just moved from Wing over to Cloud IQ uh, a couple weeks back. 24,000 APs and the prime driver was they wanted this year's data. So when next year came, they could look year over year. And we're the only manufacturer that provides that unlimited data retention. Most others are 30, 60, maybe 90 days. Um, ISO certification there, that's the same security certification that Azure and AWS and GCP uh, use. We have it ourselves. Again, the only ones that have that. So if you're going public, private, local, Azure, AWS, GCP, know that your data is protected. Um, next one here, single license cost is a big one. You know, as we're talking about these different access points, uh, switches, routers, all the different options in our portfolio, uh, it's actually a single cost and single SKU license that you guys would take advantage of. And why is that important? Um, you know, for one, it's very simple. It's a $150 list price uh, license. Um, so it's not any sort of crazy math calculation. It's how many total devices you have times that. And there you get a, get a ballpark versus uh, some of our competitors, you know, they might have uh, different pricing for their licensing structure for cloud based on the model type. If it's, you know, an entry level or, you know, uh, the, the fanciest uh, device out there, or they may have, uh, you know, differences between wireless versus switches versus routers. Ours is the same. And the biggest advantage is it's portable. So if you decommission some APs, you can actually take those licenses, uh, decouple and move it over to a switch. Nice and easy, flexible, simple. Um, next 100% uptime. Uh, that is one, you know, we used to say 11 nines of uptime, which meant, you know, maybe we were down once every 400,000 years. Uh, over the past 18 months, though, we've actually achieved 100% uptime, not a single second down globally in any of our regional or global data centers. And then the last piece is, uh, is one that I'm most proud of here locally in Canada uh, is again, all of these are first and only unique to extreme networks. So as you guys are looking at and exploring cloud, these are hopefully some benefits you guys see, but the last one uh, brand new as of last week, we just launched the first Canadian data center uh, of any networking manufacturer. So, you know, Cisco doesn't have one HP ruckus juniper, nobody has one on Canadian soil. So if anybody has data sovereignty concerns, um, you know, know that at least with extreme, uh, we now have a data center in Canada that you can leverage. Data stays local in country, so no concerns there. It's actually running on Azure. Uh, that was a request by some of the, the major retail customers that we had actually um, driving that. But it could have very well been AWS or, or GCP, but uh, that just launched. 
Next slide, Rich. And then last piece here, uh, this is just, um, you know, a, a path forward into the cloud, you know, getting your head into the cloud, so to speak. We have kind of two paths. Um, one, as Rich mentioned, Extreme Cloud IQ Connect. That is the free version of Extreme Cloud IQ. The, the super magical piece here that I, I get excited about is that um, it's free to download, but also if you're a legacy Wing customer, legacy Avaya customer with the Voss platform or legacy Extreme on the Exos platform, you can actually see and manage those devices as Rich showed you downloading that for free. So you might've bought you know, some Wing access points um, you know, a year or two ago. And even though you know, our cloud platform wasn't around then, um, now that we have it, you can actually see those assets, manage them remotely. Rich showed you some of the features and functionality you can do all for free. So, you know, if you want to kind of test this out, that's certainly one path that I would highly encourage. Just go to extremecloudiq.com, download it and choose the connect version and you will immediately see uh, your wing assets there. And then the one on the right is something that we offer through OCR. This is a test flight. Um, you know, what we do is ultimately send out some free Wi-Fi 6 APs to, you know, customers that are interested. Uh, and then we do, you know, an hour, two hour configuration workshop where we get it set up, help you get it uh, configured, onboarded, uh, working in the cloud. Um, and we can do that in a one-on-one -on -one session, in a group session. So if you have interest there, contact your OCR account manager. Um, and we can set that up probably in, you know, January, February, something like that. Uh, but it's really nice. I mean, our engineers will talk you through some of the interesting and fun home uses for the wireless access point, things like, uh, you know, blocking your kids access at, at you know, nine o'clock at night or, you know, using PPSK to segregate your IoT devices like your Nest thermostat and Alexa devices. Um, there's a lot of fun uses at home. And then obviously, uh, you know, lots of business use cases if you were to take it into the workplace that we can talk about. So those are the two options. Again, you know, you guys want to start to kick the tires on this thing as you do uh, migrate. Uh, you know, hopefully you guys uh, take advantage of one of these. So just do let us know. All right. Chris, I think uh, over to you here, Chris Orlando. Hi, thanks, Jeremiah. Um, so just to tie everything that Jeremiah and Rich talked about, um, OC OCR is actually um, one of three partners across Canada with Black Diamond status. And it kind of just showcases our team's expertise in regards to designing, deploying, and validating the solutions. So as far as OCR services wise, um, we actually utilized um, Ekahow or Air Magnet itself, what, one of the most cutting edge tools in regards to doing predictive planner surveys or even designing your actual network once we deploy. And then, and then on top of that, we tie in our services in regards to installation, cabling, and lastly, uh, validating your actual RF design and even if we do come in at a later point in the design or deployment stage, we could still come in and verify your coverage and your capacity requirements and even troubleshoot, which uh, a lot of times we've come in and resolved a lot of the issues. So that's very important in regards to deploying any of these particular extreme solutions. And uh, lastly, just to tie it all in, um, OCR, offers our true support services where you can reach out to any of our support team providing tier two or tier three support and utilizing, as mentioned, any of our software utilities or even the remote utilities and in regards to tying it all in with Wing or Cloud IQ. And I think lastly, Alana, it's Q&A. Yes, now it's time we move on to the questions that we've received. Uh, Chris, I think you're gonna read them off for you and Rich to answer. Yeah, so Rich, I think a lot of our customers are wondering, and you've been part of our team prior to, three years ago, you were a big on-prem advocate. Has that changed? Yeah, so, um, you know, my my comments in the past and, and where they sit today are that um, when, three years, four years ago, the focus was specifically on, on management. And we were, were sitting in a place where we had a, a very mature platform, like Wing was very, very mature and um, very precise. And the, uh, the cloud aspect was 
uh, they had the management aspect, but it, it didn't do anything more than on-prem. So for value, um, it, it just wasn't, it, it didn't make sense. Um, however, I, I did say that there is a need for cloud and there is a use for cloud. And at some point in time, the features of cloud will exceed um, the, the price point that cloud is at and make it very, very valuable. Um, and I believe that the um, essentials platform is and the business use cases being included in those cloud licenses is exactly where we need to be. So um, really extreme heard me back then and saying like, this is the value of on-prem versus cloud, especially when, we, when it comes down to pricing and we need more value in the cloud before you could convince a hardcore um, on-prem guy like me to, to change my mind. And so they said, okay, well, let's put your money where your mouth is and, and come and help us. And so, um, so that's what I've done. Um, I've come on board and, I, and I'm helping um, drive value to the cloud so I could take somebody with a mentality such as myself um, off of the on-prem train and go onto the cloud train. And you can see with all of the configuration tools and everything that we had in Essentials, it, it's, it's priceless. When you start to uh, compare the, the structure and what's involved to get the same features and functionality from on-prem, um, it's just so much more simplistic to do it on cloud. And then the one thing that you're going to get on cloud that you're not going to get from on-prem is that one point of visibility if you're leveraging all of the switches and everything else. So now's the time. Okay, great. Um, I think I'm, one other major question that uh, we've been receiving is with all of our Wing customers, with the end of flash support, end of 2020 actually, uh, how will Wing customers continue access the web interface? So we are continuing to develop an HTML5 interface. Um, part of that was supposed to be released in October prior to the, the retail freeze. Um, but the, the QA didn't go so well on that. So they pulled that back and it's going to be released shortly. Um, so we will have a, a, a basic version of an HTML5 GUI. For those that want to be more advanced GUI users, we released back in the summer uh, a product called Wingman um, to stay with our aviation theme. Um, so it's what it is, is it's a self-contained Flash app. You can launch it and then you, you can start to, uh, to run the existing Flash uh, GUI that's in, the, um, in Wing today. And we'll, we'll keep those around until we can get good parity with the HTML5 and Flash. And then we'll switch them so that when you go to log in, you can choose which uh, browser you want to log into. But um, Wingman will continue or allow you to continue to use Flash well above and beyond 2020. Wonderful. Um, I'm not sure that there's any more questions, uh, but if there are, we'll uh, reach out to you following this webinar. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your presentation skills, gentlemen. Um, we're going to do a draw of those that attended for the $100 gift card and we'll contact the winner uh, today. So thank you very much, everybody, once again. Thank you.